Hey, Margie here. Would you like to learn some free, easy to implement techniques that can improve your health, overall well being, and increase your happiness? Well, if the answer is yes, then you are in the right place because today's special guest is Lloyd Burrell. And in 2002, Lloyd found himself facing an uncommon and inexplicable set of health challenges. He went to multiple medical professionals who just couldn't help it. He invested thousands of dollars and years of time on solutions that didn't work. It took him nearly 10 years to recover his health. And through that experience, year after year, he developed a growing passion for energetic healing through vibration. Lloyd is the author of EMF Practical Guide and has a fabulous website, electrosense.com. Today, Lloyd is here to share the remarkable discoveries he has made on his journey. This talk is actually a preview of the exciting talks that are part of my happiness challenge that's taking place on September 21st. But there was so much great information that I really had to share this even before it's on the challenge with my podcast audience. So stay tuned. Welcome, Lloyd. Thank you so much for being with us. I can't believe you're here all the way from France. So thank you, thank you. I just really, really appreciate it. And I know the wealth of information you're bringing to our talk today can really elevate people's health, overall well-being, and their happiness. So thank you so much for joining us today. Listen, Margie, it's a pleasure. Thanks for the invitation. So let's just dive right in. You have done so much and you have a passion for energy and vibration. So why don't you tell us how this started and how you're where you are today with this? Yeah, so it started very bizarrely. One day, 2002, I answered my phone and I had a strange reaction. That's all I could say at that time. It's a little bit um, bizarre. And then it went from kind of bizarre to unpleasant to unbearable in a very short space of time. And I was really, it just hit me out of the blue, this uh, from like nowhere, all of a sudden, whoa, what's going on? Um, and uh, this led me on a health journey, which um, really I'm still on that journey. So this was in 2002. Um, and there was, there's been a good number of ups and downs, thankfully at the moment. And now it's all ups, but uh, yeah, so it was um, the reaction to my cell phone, which um, people say to me, well, how do you know it was your cell phone? Really simple. Cell phone next to the ear. I was in pain. Cell phone away, no pain. Wow. And I got all these symptoms, kind of immediate symptoms when I was using the phone and uh, like uh, prickly, tingling skin, um, hot head, hot ear, um, and then kind of uh, longer term symptoms, um, all kinds of issues, uh, digestive issues, weight gain, weight loss, uh, massive fatigue, uh, insomnia. Um, and so, yeah, I was pretty much in a mess, we can say. And it was only, it wasn't only the cell phone, it was, I started to react to everything. Um, and uh, I've told this story many, many times. Oh. And uh, I, I often say jokingly, because I've told it to doctors, it got so bad, I actually went to see my doctor, which <laughs> is the truth, um, who unfortunately could do nothing much for me and none of the specialists could. And um, it took me really about two years because I was literally not well in my own home, not well out, reacting to my computer, the TV, the telephone, just a regular corded telephone. Uh, I was in pain. I mean, it was just like, you know, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide kind of thing. And um, I read a story in my newspaper, national newspaper at the time, about a guy who, he was CEO of a big food group. And this was sort of a highbrow newspaper, so I could believe it, you know. Um, and um, he was like me. Uh, in fact, perhaps even worse. And he couldn't use a computer, couldn't use a telephone, was dictating everything to his secretary. And they gave a term to this and it was electrical sensitivity. So it was like, Eureka, I'm not alone and I'm not going crazy because literally I thought I was going crazy. Oh. And uh, so for two years, I was sort of telling myself I'm okay and I wasn't okay. Didn't really know what to do. So that was a turning point. And the turning point there was that there were other people like me and the, this EMF thing was real. Um, and I'd kind of been shying away from it. And so I began to delve into it. And the second revelation was that EMFs affect everybody. So this 
these electromagnetic fields from cell phones and not just cell phones, but all these devices which we're using in our homes, Bluetooth, smart, and even wired as well, you know, just the wiring in your home impact everybody. It's just some people can feel it and some people can't, but that's what the science, uh, that's what I discovered and what is very clear if you look at the science, but few people know this, uh, unfortunately, and that's why I talk about it so people can begin to understand. Um, and the third thing was that, and this came out really from going beyond the doctors and because uh, obviously when you've got a problem, then you, you kind of, you broaden the net kind of thing. And you, I was, so I went beyond the doctors and I started uh, visiting energy workers, healers, um, all kinds of osteopaths, um, all kinds of people, um, you know, mind, body, spirit kind of uh, work. And from, from, from that, there was this real realization that actually it wasn't that I was particularly sensitive, just sensitive to EMFs. It was, I was sensitive to energy and that was the key. And so it was this whole energy thing. And then I kind of looking back, I realized because I've always been very intuitive and I realized that, well, yeah, why am I intuitive? Because I'm picking up people's energy and I could pick up, I can pick up people's energy very easily. And that was really the key. Um, and that is the key to what I share today. So I do talk about EMFs, these uh, non-natural man-made frequencies from all these different sources, these devices. And the key really is to, is to learn how to protect yourself from these often very harmful frequencies on the one hand. And on the other hand is to work with harness these really rather beautiful um, frequencies of nature, these, this energy of nature. Um, and that is really uh, what I share. And this is, um, so it's, yeah, it's a whole, it's all about energy and, uh, and obviously happiness fits into that because happiness has an energy. Happiness has an energy, it has a vibration. Um, and um, some people just don't think about that. It's like happiness has got an energy really, but it has everything's got an energy, literally emotions have got our energy. We've got high energy emotions and, and low energy emotions. So happiness is obviously high vibe. Oh, I love this. And energy is contagious. I mean, there's just not a question as a physical therapist, when I was working, you know, when I work with people, you can just feel their energy and you have to be so careful. So one of the things I had to learn to do, which I want you to really share, because I know this is a huge part of what you do, is really to ground myself because otherwise you are, you're really susceptible to all these different energies. So why don't you talk about, I know grounding is part of something that you do every day. And mm. why, don't you, why don't you share that? And maybe a little bit about the science behind it and, yeah. and some of the things that you'd recommend people. Because I love people to have takeaways. And you have so many that have helped <laughs> you that a lot of people just don't know about. And that's why I think the work you do is so important because you're spreading this information and each person who hears something like your story, and I know your story isn't easy to tell, as, as we talked about, but it's so nice that you do share this. So the person who's like you, oh, maybe that's my issue. So thank you for sharing it. And let's start with grounding. Yeah, pleasure. No, I'm happy to share it because again, it's, uh, I think people need to understand and, and um, maybe fit what my experience helps them in what they're experiencing. And, that, and that's why I share this. Um, so grounding, yeah, you know, one of the things when I was visiting these different um, practitioners was so many times they kept saying to me, Lloyd, you're not grounded. You're not grounded. And honestly, I was sick to death of hearing this. <laughs> and I was like, well, how do I ground? You know? And um, so I can't really put um, a date on exactly when I became interested in grounding, but I was, I, before we came on, I actually looked on my website because I started my website in 2009. Um, but I actually wrote an article in 2011, but it was way before that, that I was uh, interested and, and started grounding. I mean, there's many ways to ground, but perhaps the easiest is actually uh, to physically ground. And there is quite a lot of science behind this, uh, notably from the Earthing Institute. We can call it grounding or we can call it earthing. I tend to call it earthing more than grounding to make the, the difference between clear between what we do on electrical wiring 
and what we actually do personally, but it's the same thing. So grounding, earthing, um, it's getting into physical contact with the earth very simply. <laughs> and uh, this is what happens when we do this. We are um, getting into contact. We've got this, we absorb these uh, negative electrons from the earth and we discharge these AC uh, man-made electrons which we're absorbing because we're all like antennas actually like walking antennas literally picking up all this energy these kind of emfs man-made and non-man-made and you know we've not evolved as a species to to do that particularly so that the the natural energies yeah but not this man-made stuff uh you know from cell phones and cell towers and uh, the wiring, like I'm saying, this dirty electricity is another term, another form of electrical pollution. Uh, all these forms of electrical pollution, electro smog, we can't see it, we can't feel it, most of us can't feel it, we can't taste it, we can't touch it, and yet it's there, you know. And so some people can feel it, but whether you can feel it or not, it's still there and it's still impacting your health and your happiness, obviously, because if, if it's impacting your health, Somewhere down the line, it's impacting how you feel. And that's, you know, your happiness, which is super important for health. Both is very uh, intertwined. Uh, so there is a lot of science behind this. And if you want to learn more about the science, then I encourage you well, to go either to my website, electricsense.com, or specifically on this question, the Earthing Institute. You can Google that. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it's just actually rather amazing that something as simple as earthing is like, taking your shoes off and getting in contact with the physical earth can be so powerful. Uh, and literally we're talking resetting the autonomous nervous system within two or three seconds. And the studies on this, okay. It's not just that making it up. There's actual studies on this um, and uh, reducing inflammation within acute inflammation within 30 minutes. This is what has been shown. And there's about 20 peer reviewed studies on the beneficial effects of this practice of grounding or earthing. Uh, so that's kind of the, what there is to understand. And we can actually measure it with a body voltage meter or some component of how this works. We can measure the, uh, the man-made aspect of us and building biologists do this uh, frequently when they go into somebody's home they can actually measure they go they tell the person to lie on the bed and they measure in the bedroom because what's going on in the bedroom is super important for your health making sure you're in a low emf environment um and so yeah it's really uh, what you need to know people are watching listening is that you can earth very simply it's 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 easy to do it doesn't take long and it's free um and literally by going out in the garden um, with your shoes off so you want to be somewhere obviously where it's safe to walk with your shoes off um, and um, the safest way or the most the most um, not, not necessarily the safest but the most powerful way to earth is actually to swim naked in the sea I'm not suggesting you do that but obviously you'll wear a swimming costume most certainly um, but um, and then you there's all these different uh, ways that you can earth with uh, different materials, devices, which have been developed. Uh, for instance, I have uh, earthing shoes. They're actual sandals, which are really great, uh, which are still, I mean, these things are like, I had them made to measure. They were sent to me, they were present. And they sent me these things. I sent them in my footprint and they made them for me. And honestly, these things are amazing. And like, they're still going strong, like five years later. And I wear them every day. My wife hates them. Uh, but uh, honestly, I love them. And they've got like a metal, they've got a metal in the sole. And it's, um, and that's connected to your, uh, and then it's connected to your, uh, the sole of your foot. So the metal in the sole of the shoe connects to the metal in the sole of your foot. It's very simple. Um, as a, you know, a lot of this stuff is, and I have various uh, I have like a strap, which I ground with also. Um, but what I really uh, recommend people to do is to ground outdoors if you can, uh, because it's simple and it's free. And then why do I ground indoors? Well, because sometimes it's raining or it's too cold. So that way I'll do it that way uh, uh, when I have to. Um, and just what people need to know is there are, so it doesn't work for everybody. And there are cases where, um, we have building biologists or, and I've talked to a number 
an EMF consultant who go in and they've discovered that uh, people, you know, people have got uh, very serious health conditions and they go in and they look at what they're doing and they're grounding and they go, oh my God, no, you can't ground. And so there's, there are people that are against it and they, you know, and I'm talking about experts um, that are against this and they say, well, no, 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 stop grounding. And like a week later, they stop grounding and they're okay. So what's going on? Yeah, I mean, what, how can I, so why, you know, how can I, one, one hand be recommending that you ground and on the same hand saying, well, these people that do have problems. Well, what I'm saying is that you, it's kind of a suck and see, you try it. Um, because there are places, particularly in North America, uh, where there is a lot of ground current, there's a lot of return current. Uh, the, the physical earth is used as the, the return path for the electrical uh, utility companies. And so there is this current and it can be measured. Um, and that is a fact. Uh, what is not clear is overall on balance, you know, if we take the, the, the good energy, which is the earth's energy, and we mix that in with this bad energy, which is the electrical current going back, is that, is the net effect beneficial or not? And in some people it is, and in some people it's not, and maybe it's certain places, but I tend to think it's about people. Um, and I think it's way more complicated than that. Uh, but yeah, so in a nutshell, what I'm saying is try this. It can be really powerful. And honestly, I've got testimonials from people who've been uh, just miraculous recoveries, people who've had really debilitating rheum rheumatoid arthritis and conditions like that. And they've been earthing just over a matter of weeks and their health has completely turned around. So yeah, so that is another way to happiness is to ground and obviously grounding, um, you know, being outdoors obviously is a big boost. Um, and yeah, so it's cheap and easy to do and uh, you've got to try that. Well, I love the free things and it's interesting you say that because years ago I was at a spa actually and there was an energy worker and she said, you're just not grounded. And I love crystals, but I wasn't even using the grounding crystals. You know, I was very much not grounded. And so she suggested, because I meditate every day. So she said, you know what? Just go in your backyard, take your shoes off and do your meditation where you're on the ground. And just doing that when the weather's nice really made a big difference. And I think everybody can relate to how amazing it feels when you're walking on that ocean and you, you know, when you're walking on the beach, there's this incredible feeling and it's, it's the grounding. And so it's, it's so, that's such a great point. But I have a question for you. So if someone is, you know, if someone wants to get their house evaluated, how do they know who, you know, if they want an expert where to go? In, yeah, so where in to go? Yeah. Right. So in terms of uh, EMFs, mm -hmm. um, so honestly, the best advice I think for anything, when you're looking for anybody, I always say is word of mouth. If you oh, okay. know somebody who has had their home inspected uh, mm -hmm. by an EMF consultant and it went well and they're happy with it, then I would say in lo locally, go with that person. But beyond that, if you don't know anybody, then uh, the Institute of Building Biology, it's called, okay. um, which um, is a nonprofit organization, uh, which brings together um, several hundred uh, building biologists in uh, the US and around the world, in fact, uh, there's more than that around the world, but it's, uh, so that's a good place to go. Or the uh, geobiology is another um, kind of um, diploma that these people have. And th so these people are specialized. So not all building biologists are specialized in this EMF field. So ideally you want somebody who is a, an electromagnetic radiation specialist. That's the term. Uh, for that and yeah just go on the website google that yeah oh that's great but the good thing is for all of us listening get out there without your shoes get in the woods get on anywhere and it's i love that the research is so positive for such even a short period of time how how great and that's what i like about your work you have so many free things that we can do that can really change our lives so thank you for that tip okay so now we talked about the ground let's go to the sunlight I know that's yeah. something else that's part of your daily regimen and your protocol for wellness. So why don't you fill us in on how we can use the power of the sun? Yeah. So, you know, everything on earth, you know, sun, so the sun is just um, a formidable source of energy for, for really everything, everything 
pretty much revolves around that. Um, all living things, certainly, and obviously us humans. And uh, we tend to kind of overlook or take this for granted. And um, we live these rather crazy lives where we're indoors in artificial lighting for hours on end. And, um, you know, this is not natural. This is not, you know, I'm always, it's really, when I think about health, um, like if something is good or bad for me, I do very often what I call the caveman test. So I think, well, would the caveman have done this? <laughs> so would he have done, you know, would he have sat inside indoors, surrounded by man-made electromagnetic frequencies and non natural light all day long? No, of course not. Um, so yeah, the sun, and there's plenty of science behind this. Um, the sun is super important as a mood regulator. So there we're back to happiness again. I mean, it makes me feel great being out in the sun. I love going out in the sun. And then obviously in terms of vitamin D, um, and not just vitamin D, but vitamin D3, which you can only get from the sun. Um, so there, there is that. And it just impacts um, our state of well-being, I think, beyond a level which many people comprehend. And we need, we are tuned into these, this natural cycle of the sun. And we've got this daily cycle, uh, the circadian rhythm, but there's also like, um, a monthly cycle, uh, the seasonal cycles and the yearly cycles. Um, and you know, the sun's changing, the sun's energy is changing all the time. And you know, there are stories of people's health being uh, impacted by things like uh, solar flares. There's some science on that too. Um, so it's just really important. I think people overlook, so I'm actually quite pale skin, but as you, I'm, as you can see, I take the sun very quickly. And uh, I love going out in the sun. And I, what's really important is, is to get regular exposure to this, um, this just primary source of nutrition uh, for our bodies and for our minds. Because, yeah, it's good for our bodies, but it's good for our minds too. It goes in through our eyes and it goes into our brain. You know, our brain needs these frequencies. We're back to this energy frequency vibration thing because it's all about a free you know different frequencies of this spectrum of frequencies which the sun emits uh different frequencies different wavelengths and we need this uh, this is part of who we are and um one really beautiful term of uh is to think of it like he helping you to dance with the rhythms of nature um and uh, the sun helps you do that and so there so there are so what i recommend is is really first thing in the morning that's the first thing i do is go outside and particularly now it's absolutely glorious here so obviously we're in high summer um and it's uh, i love going out because it's not too hot and i go out in the garden a bit so i'm doing the grounding and then uh i'm, t I'm getting the natural sunlight and um yeah i'm, I'm um thinking about the sun uh, so you can do it in a conscious way you can do it sometimes i'm not always thinking about the sun but it's good to actually think about it and and just sort of um you know just be grateful for that and feel that in your heart you know this uh connection this 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 just just beautiful energy that uh, that, that we're bathed in every day um and going out you know just for maybe you don't have time maybe you think well no i haven't got time in my day uh, you know, it's like, okay, for you, <laughs> but I haven't got time in my day. Well, find time, you know, just a few minutes. I mean, ideally, you know, 10 minutes, quarter of an hour, 20 minutes, it takes me about 20 minutes to water the garden. So I'll do that at the same time. I'll do a whole, whole load of other things like energy things as well while I'm doing it. But, um, and you know, interacting with my plants and, and you know, so connecting with nature, uh, what the great opportunity to do that. Um, but yeah, in the morning, the, the morning sun is super important because it, it's like a reset. It gives your body a reset. And honestly, so many of us are messed up. It's like our, our biology is messed up because we're not connecting with this vital energy from the sun. And we're, we're too uh, impacted 
by these non-natural energies of all these EMF devices, all these you know gadgets, wonderful gadgets in many ways, but um, we don't realize how much harm they're doing to us uh, in other ways. So in the morning, get your 10 minutes in if you can, 20 minutes even better. Um, obviously be careful, depends where you live, but be careful the midday sun, you know, only mad dogs and Englishmen, as Noel Cowd said, go out in the midday sun. Um, and then, uh, but that's not to say don't go out. Um, I personally, I do go out. Uh, ideally for me, I go out every 30 minutes. So that's personally for me. I need the sun. I can work really, really long hours. If I go out in the sun, out in the sun every 30 minutes, it's like, honestly, it's just amazing. And I notice if I don't do it, then I'm getting all kinds of uh, muscular aches and pains and things. So it really is very, uh, I'm particularly sensitive to the sun, but I think many people are, they don't realize it. And uh, if you are, if you're not doing this, then you're opening the gateway to dis-ease. So many uh, different, you know, chronic illnesses now, including cancer, and there, are, there is science, again, uh, behind this. So in the morning, multiple times during the day. So if you're working in an office, go out. Go outside. Go out. Get some natural light. Should you wear, be wearing sunglasses? Only if you have to. I know they look great. I know it makes you maybe look like a movie star or whatever. But it's, um, if you're, you know, to protect yourself from very strong sunlight, okay. And glare, for instance, when you're near the water. But most of the time, Glasses are not a good idea, and people we got this kind of dependence on on sunglasses, and um, everybody it seems like the thing to do, like have a cell phone if you want. It's the thing to do, but it's not. Um, it's not really always that beneficial. And I hardly ever wear glasses. Hardly ever, like uh, I don't know, maybe ten times a year or something. So, and I'm uh, so as you can see, I'm fair skinned, blue eyes, uh, but um, it's just you should get used to it. Uh, so it's natural. You need that energy. You don't want to filter between you and this natural energy because if you put a filter, which glasses are, then it's distorting that. And so you need this natural energy. So yeah, the sunlight in the morning, multiple times during the day and in the evening. And I think everybody can do that. And again, it's free and it's easy. You just need to put in a little bit of effort, but it's worth it. Oh, that is so helpful right now with the pandemic when so many people, instead of having their meetings in person, are on Zoom and, you know, on the internet. And I think all of us, our screen time is just multiplied. And we're, so that's the best. And we're home. So a lot of people are working from home now, way more than ever have. So just to stop in your break and just go outside, even for a few minutes, I'm a big sun, I love the sun as well, and it just makes me feel so good. And I don't know where I learned the sunning meditation, I think it's called, where I just close my eyes, no glasses, take, and I have very sensitive eyes, so I am a person that I, I really have issues if I can't, if I don't wear my sunglasses. However, I take off the sunglasses, keep my eyes shut, look up to the sun, and I do a few things. Either I do a Qigong exercise, but I'm grateful. I really have gratitude for the sun, and I soak it in, I actually, Feel the sun coming in through my whole body. And in three minutes, it is the best reset ever. And it's just so miraculous that it's hard to believe. And then I just have it go in one direction and the other direction. You can play with it. And as you said, there's so many ways, gardening, it, whatever. But that's such great advice, free, easy, and just take the time. Because sometimes, exactly as you said, we're so busy and you happen to be electrosensitive so you don't have an option because you can't function if you don't do these practices but many people can but they don't realize that their health happiness everything can be a whole different level when they incorporate this okay great so we now have the ground we have the sun so the land and the light now let's talk about water that's another one that we can also utilize to help our happiness and health so fill us in on the water yeah so water Again, it's, um, it's just an essential part of life on this planet. Uh, water, uh, the, the planet is essentially composed of water. We are essentially composed of water, something like 70, 80% of water. And 
And yet many of us are dehydrated. And yet many of us are drinking all day long, drinking, drinking, drinking. You see people with these bottles walking around, drinking, drinking, drinking. I'm not saying you shouldn't drink. So I do have my glass of water here, but it's structured water. I'll get onto that in a sec. Um, so water is really important um, because it's, um, it's, it's the means with which uh, chemical reactions can take place. We need the water. Uh, if we don't, if we don't have the water, then everything kind of just goes all on. It kind of slows down, and we get all kind of sluggish. And, um, and you know, dehydration—it's like um, it's the epidemic of today. So okay, we've got other epidemics going on, but dehydration is really a, a big problem, which few people are aware of and they're trying to hydrate or maybe they are aware of it and they're trying to hydrate but they're doing it wrongly um and if we don't it's kind of being hydrated is it's like the glue which holds our bodies together which 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 oils the machine so to speak i don't particularly like to think of our bodies as a machine but that's anyway that's an analogy i can give you um so it's it's really important um to stay hydrated and you know it's um so people think well yeah yeah i gotta drink a load of water i gotta drink a load of water but no actually it's not about necessarily drinking a, a lot of water um and again the, just as an aside you know um what's important is uh, is this water is uh, as an energy source uh, also um, so we're actually, um, and it's completing obviously with the sun. So it's with the grounding, with the, with the sunlight and with the water, it all goes together. And when you think about it, really, honestly, it's not rocket science, is it? That we need to be hydrated. So how, how, what can we do to be hydrated? You know, and, um, and it, it's like, if we're not hydrated again, it's not only just about health, but it, it is about happiness again, because one goes with the other. So what can we do to be de What can we do to be hydrated? <laughs> um, so it's easy to, it seems it's easy to be dehydrated, but what can we do to be hydrated? Well, it's, um, the, what, what we need to understand is, so yeah, it is important to drink liquids, but, um, it's really about nutrition as much as anything. Um, and, uh, because the best, actually best sources of water, the most, um, easily absorbable water, the most compatible water for our system is actually what's found in food, uh, in, 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 uh, notably, uh, vegetables and fruits. And that's where we find this EZ water, which, uh, there's some been wonderful research being done on this by a gentleman called Dr. Gerald Pollack. Um, and it's like this structured water. It's, so it's like water, and he discovered this looking at, um, well, how water reacted, looking at it under the microscope, and found that actually uh, in our cells, it was like a gel-like substance. It wasn't like a flowing water, and therefore that there was this fourth state of water beyond uh, you know, liquid, ice and vapor which is this gel like structure and so it makes sense if we consume foods which have already got this gel like structure in it that's what hydrates us the most and that's what's key along with other things like um, oils really important taking quality uh, oils quality organic oils uh, you know like the the uh, the women working in the fields in morocco and algeria and you know these hot countries are they walking around with water bottles all day no they're walking around with argan oil and different oils and honey and things like this, which helps them. So they take some water, but then it's how they retain that water and absorb that water. So it's, a, it's, it's about, uh, it's about nutrition. Um, uh, so yeah, it's, um, water is just this fundamental thing, which, um, which particularly today we, in this EMF world, you know, these EMFs are dehydrating us. So we do need to compensate. And so the nutrition, yeah. And what goes with that really, um, and the caveman didn't do this, but the caveman drank from streams and the water was already structured uh, because, um, so w water in nature is structured. It's what we do. It's what man does with it that makes it destructured. That, you know, we fill it with chemicals and we put it down straight tubes um, and this is not what water was designed for. Water was designed to run through mountain streams and be in contact with minerals 
you know, from the earth and that structures it. So we now, how do we solve this? Well, we now have uh, devices which you can install in your home. Uh, I haven't got one, but I have a little uh, device which, is, which recreates what nature does. It recreates like a vortex. It's got some minerals in it. And I just, you know, uh, to run this water into this glass, I just run it through my little structured device, which is about a tube about this long, portable. Honestly, it's wonderful. Um, and I drink pretty much only structured water. So uh, I don't drink coffee very rarely anyway, apart from if I'm in Italy and it's cappuccino, obviously I can't really use it. <laughs> but um, if otherwise I'm on tea. And when I say tea, I mean infusions and um, so black teas, green teas, uh, rooibos teas uh, from South Africa, for instance, uh, which I don't have any tea, in, uh, tea uh, like um, uh, the, the, they don't have any tea plant in it. Um, and then um, I'm drinking maybe some fruit juices, but I will put some always using a mix with this structured water. Why? Because this is what we designed, if you want, evolved to, to consume. And so this is highly compatible and uh, it's just really a pillar of health um, is being dehydrated, is being hydrated. <laughs> so don't be dehydrated, be hydrated and the nutrition and uh, the, the structured water. So for people that have reverse osmosis, which will get, you know, will get rid of the chlorine and the fluoride and a lot of the problems then, but it doesn't have the minerals in it. So do you have a suggestion just that they take minerals? Would that do the trick? So I have uh, this reverse osmosis and a water softener. And then on top of that, I run it through here. So, you know, the water softener where we need, it's like, you know, where we live, it's just essential um because water is very very hard and it creates all kind of problems with the washing machine and so on and so forth um so yeah you just run it through this device that's what i recommend is getting one of these devices you can actually make it yourself on youtube i don't particularly recommend that like with marbles and stuff you can go on youtube uh, you better get in one which is you know which has been designed uh, the, because there's uh, certain uh, ratios to respect and certain minerals which are particularly important uh, which can do this job you know so look at get, get something which has been designed to do that that's what i recommend okay because that's that's my situation as well we have very hard water so i have the softener and i have the reverse osmosis but i don't have this part three part this part c to it so is there a link that you can share with us or you can give it to me that I'll, um so yeah absolutely so um there's different uh, companies that do this but one off the top of my head is the wellness company and uh, i know that i interviewed uh, gina Bria, who wrote a wonderful book called quench eight glasses of water a day is not the way so the title says it all okay, she great. co authored that book and um so yeah uh, that's a great resource to learn more about this. Uh, but yes, the well, I think it's the wellness company or the wellness corporation. Okay, great. I'll look into it and, and give the link to everyone. That's great. The, cause that's very important. Do you have any of your favorite? I know I'm a big celery person because that has a lot of water in it. Do you have a favorite fruit or vegetable for the water? <laughs> you know, um, I eat a lot of vegetables and we have we grow our um we've got our gardener this year that's to say my my son <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's lucky you. yeah Woo. he's very very green fingered and uh, he's teaching me how to garden <laughs> oh that's great <laughs> um, <laughs> um so um you know i just say you know whole organic natural foods this is the key and if you can grow your own everybody can't i know that but if you can grow your own it's so much better it's so much fun growing your own and and that you know i do because it it makes me go out in the garden as well it makes me spend time with these plants and i'm i'm watching these plants and i'm you know i'm learning from these plants because plant plants are really sensitive way more sensitive than us humans um so you can learn so much by observing plants yeah but it's yeah i mean i just uh, so there's hardly a vegetable i don't like and if i was to give some advice as to what to eat because i'm always really careful about giving dietary advice because there's so much information out there about what you should and shouldn't eat. 
I would say be looking to have as many different colors on your plate as possible, um, quite simply. And then obviously we can go more into the science on that about looking, you know, foods with uh, high antioxidant pro properties, etc. But just very simply, uh, whole organic natural foods uh, and lots of colors on your plate. Right. I'm big into eating the rainbow. Okay, great. So just a few other things that are so important to me, and I know they're important to you as well, about other people and avoiding negativity. You want to just comment mm. on that? Yeah, so I think I've, this is something really which came to me, um, I guess it was after, it was like this revelation after the whole EMF thing, that I was really sensitive to other people's energies. Um, and I think many people are and they didn't realize it. And I kind of knew it. And yeah, I didn't, I don't know. I just, it just didn't seem important because my, I'm not from a health background at all. I trained to be a CPA, uh, a <laughs> chartered accountant in the UK. And uh, so this just happened to me, this cell phone thing. And I was no longer in accountancy. I was running a <laughs> rental business when it happened. Um, and um, so, and then, and then obviously you kind of think back when, so when all that happened and then you think back to, well, how, you know, different things, how you are in your everyday life, really nothing to do with EMFs, but everything to do with energy. And yes, um, so I am very sensitive to people's energies and um, it makes me something of a, I don't know if it's because of that or I don't know which way around it is chicken or the egg kind of situation, uh, but I, I like my own company. And I'd rather have my own company than be around people that I don't appreciate <laughs> because, um, the, you know, there are so many people which are energy vampires. Um, and so they're lovely people, uh, but they really suck your energy. And this is, uh, I can, I can really feel this and I've got, um, a short, a fairly short fuse for all that kind of thing. And honestly, there's so many, I think there's so many, really wonderful powerful ways you can spend your time uh why would you spend time just for the sake of spending time with somebody if they are an energy vampire and we can say well yeah they've got negative energy they've got so i think we all know what these people are people that go on and on about themselves people that go on and on about the problems uh, because it's like you know it's like you haven't got a problem of course i've got a problem yeah i've got a problem Right now, I can't think of it because I never think of my problems, but yeah, there is actually a problem from yesterday. I could, so if I think about it, I could really go into that <laughs> uh, very, very, um, very big problem, particularly for my wife and, you know, like a personal thing uh, with her family that I was involved with, literally life or death situation. So if I wanted to go there and talk about that all day long, then I could become that person with that kind of negative energy. But I don't want to do that. And so it's a choice. So we all have this choice to really, um, it's, it's all about what you focus on. And, um, and also, you know, a choice in terms of people that you mix with and um, this, what, you know, these friends, these people that you spend time with. Um, and so it can be just immensely enriching to spend time with people that, uh, that make you laugh, that, you share a passion with uh, that you've got things in common with uh, not talking about your problems with them, you know? So there is a time for doing that, but not all the time. <laughs> and obviously we do sometimes we do need to talk about our problems. And I know this is more of a, a women's thing than a man's thing. Um, but uh, yeah. So I think being really careful about who you're spending time, it's an energy thing. So there is literally, we are surrounded by, a field of energy called the biofield. And this is not woo-woo at all. This is actually hard science. Um, and it's been recognized by the National Institutes of Health in the US. We are surrounded by a biofield. Before we called it the aura, some people still do. You know, like, so we've got a metaphys metaphysical terms for this, you know, this, this energy which, which is surrounding us. But uh, it's, it's actually a biofield, if you want. That's kind of the official term. And we're all working, walking around with this biofield, surrounded by this biofield, which extends out from our body. And whenever anybody comes into that, I mean, let alone having a conversation, you're picking up those energies. And some of us can do it more than others. But I believe everybody, well, everybody's got a biofield. So everybody 
is impacted by, by this. And again, it's like you're maybe it's it may it, I think it's almost simply like EMFs. So it's kind of we're all impacted by this. It's just some of us more than others. Some of us feel it, uh, but we're all being impacted by it in, in some shape or form. So be really just be conscious of that, that negative energy from other people, because that certainly can, you know, I think happiness, it's something which you, it doesn't necessarily come easily to everybody. So my, uh, my wife is a really happy person. And I knew, so my mother was quite depressive. <laughs> so when I went to marry, I mean, you know, to the person I wanted to uh, spend the rest of my life with, um, it was, I wanted, I wanted to somebody, you know, that would be happy and easygoing. And she, she is. So I'm not saying she's wonderful at everything. <laughs> she's a good cook too. Um, but uh, for me, that was really important. And it was, um, I guess it was a subconscious thing. I was looking for somebody, you know, with like a feel good thing about them. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so, uh, so that was really, that was really obvious for me. And I think it's something really which we all perhaps need to pay a little bit more attention to. You know, it's so important. It's interesting. In my happiness class, that's the number one question I'm asked. What do I do about all these people surrounding me? And we really spend, I would say we spend almost a half hour on techniques, what you can do and boundaries and different things. But I think step one is exactly what you said. Just sort of be aware. How do people make you feel? Are they those energy vampires that... And there was, <laughs> just real quickly, when I was working, I was working in Chicago on people with chronic pain. So TMJ, head and neck, as a physical therapist. And there was one person in particular who was just so negative. And I didn't really have techniques at the time. And my husband would know. He knew exactly who I saw that day because I would come home tense and nothing, that, nothing was different. But it's so true. And I'm sure we all can know that person, unfortunately, who who does that. So I think that's just amazing advice. And oh my gosh, we can talk for so, I could talk to you for hours because you're such a wealth of information. And I love, I absolutely love all these great things, the grounding, the sunlight, the water, avoiding the negativity. They're all things we're free. We can all put into our life immediately. And I know they're going to make such a difference. So I can't thank you enough, but I want you to talk about, you have a really amazing upcoming event that I think, which is also free, but I think that people will be really interested in. So why don't you share a little bit about your event? Yeah. So my event um, is called Healing with Vibration and it's a free event. Uh, I brought together uh, 50 scientists, researchers, building biologists, um, healers, and we're exploring this whole uh, domain of energy and how to use energy um, to improve your life. Because it seems like when you go to the doctors, it's all about, or very often it's about popping pills and surgery and stuff and pretty radical procedures with loads of often uh, can be very disastrous side effects. And when we're working with energy, there's none of that. <laughs> and it's um, why it's like, why, why do people not know about this? Well, there is a reason and it's to do with money. It's because a lot of this is actually, it's just things we can do. It's like knowledge is power, I guess, resumes it. Um, and, you know, you were talking about boundaries and stuff and exercises. And we, we go into all of that. And personally, this is what I do, too. I do a lot of and every morning. Uh, I mean, it used to take me hours, but literally I can do my energy work in minutes now. Um, and it's really important for me. And in fact, I do it throughout the day uh, also. Um, so and this is just information. It's like, well, yeah, you're different, Lloyd. Or the, the, Well, everybody's different. Everybody's different. But we we can all use this we can all use this to improve our life uh to improve our well-being and and be happy and be in the vibration of joy and this is actually my soul's mission is to be in the vibration of joy um and it's rather ironic because you know for years i've been talking about emfs which is a pretty <laughs> serious subject and yet here i am actually on this planet to be in the vibration of joy um so but I guess it's, I don't know, it's rather, it's, it's, it's rather strange, but it is what it is. Um, so obviously with this event, um, it's really just so many practical 
tools, uh, some science, uh, workshops, um, over 50 speakers and really it's it's a no-brainer it's free and it starts on the 22nd of September for one week. oh my gosh I can't wait this is <laughs> I, you know I really believe Lloyd that every person has their path and sometimes we have to go through major major challenges but when we do then there's a bright light at the end of the tunnel there's a gift and this is gonna be your gift massive joy <laughs> after all that you struggle to for so now so that's you know that's, you know, that's how i'm looking for, at for, it from, for me yeah. uh, it's um it's a gift from mankind this is how much for, for for humanity you know this is i think this is where we need to be you know these are we, we just had a little chat before we came on but you know these are serious times so i really get your energy and i love it too and <laughs> but there's some people who are not in this energy that w which we're in and they're in a completely uh, another kind of energy and um those people need help but I think there's, there is a lot of people which are kind of borderline and open to this information. And I think there's going to be what I'm um, hoping for. And, and I'm really, it's more than hoping for. I just know this, I can feel it's going to happen is we're going to have this snowball effect. And there's these people that sort of the, uh, the perimeter of all this, which you're looking on and maybe thinking, well, yeah. Oh, actually, oh, okay. There is some science because some people won't be turned around to this until they know there's some science and it's not completely out there and peace and love and all that but it's not there is hard science behind this you know and what's more it works believe me it works it is so powerful all this stuff and so that's why i wanted to share it yeah sorry to interrupt you but it's a it's a gift for humanity and like what you're doing too i believe oh thank you but it's true i mean i I'm a physical therapist starting out, like how I came to teaching happiness was I saw all of these things are part of happiness. And then when people adopt these habits, it's life changing. And anyone can, even if you're listening and you're like, oh, I'm a total glass half full person. It doesn't matter. You can start even and start slowly, one thing at a time, because certainly overwhelm is the opposite of happiness. But do one thing, take your shoes off and sit outside or walk in the garden or any of these things that you spoke about today and start seeing your vibration. You all of a sudden are feeling better. So who doesn't want to feel better and be happier and healthier? I, I think and people don't realize that joy is something that we should all strive. There's no reason that we, regardless of our circumstances, and that's sort of the happiness I talk about, not to be sitting with a grin on your face and not experience sadness or anger or frustration. That's not it. It's a deep sense of peace and well-being that regardless of your circumstances. So anyway, this has been so much fun. I'm excited. There'll be a link for everybody below this for for your event so they can sign up and it just sounds so exciting thank you for bringing this to the planet and thank you for all the work you did and didn't just give up on it and you dug deeper and you found because this wasn't easy for you and not everybody you know goes through what you have to learn what, what you, you, you learned through this and the lessons but thank you for sharing them and thank you for reliving your story and bringing all this amazing information to us to help our health and elevate our happiness so thank you so thank much you, Marjorie. thank you thank, thank you, you. it's thank been you. such thank a pleasure <laughs> thank you thank you for inviting me it's been a pleasure really i hope you've enjoyed today's interview with lloyd burell as much as i have and now I have some new tools that you can put into your life that can have a profound positive impact on both your health and happiness so there are two events that i want to tell you about that will have the links in the show notes number one is lloyd summit which we mentioned in the interview and that's going to take place on september 22nd and it's the healing through vibration summit so all the information will be in the show notes and also my three-day happiness challenge which i talk for three days they're going to be live sessions with me at 12 o'clock eastern standard time and that starts on september 21st and it's free and also i have numerous guests who really give great insights into different health topics that impact your happiness. So make sure to sign up for that. The links will also be in the show notes. So thanks so much for being here today. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.